This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. Springtime, summer will hopefully be here soon in the Sioux Empire. And that just means more opportunities to get outdoors and to enjoy outdoor activities. One activity that you can check out this year for the second year is the Sioux Falls City FC women's soccer team. And joining us once again are co-owners of the team, Emily Thomas and Melissa Nelson. Hey guys, good morning. Hello, good Good morning. morning. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about yourselves and about the team itself. It is the first pre-professional women's team right here in the Sioux Empire. So, Melissa, I'll have you start out. All right. So, my name is Melissa Nelson, and I am one of the owners, um, co-owners of this team. So, also my husband, Gabe Nelson, and we have three daughters. Um, I'm a pediatric nurse, and I guess this is... This is our this is our passion and I guess our hobby and, and kind of the life right now. Yeah, Emily. Yeah. So hello everyone. Um, <laughs> Emily Thomas. I am also one of the female co-owners um, along with my husband, Eric. Um, very happy that Gabe and Melissa came to us and asked us to do this adventure with them. Um, yeah, I have three kids as well. Um, just love sports love all the things that sports provides um and just i love the idea of people coming together strangers for one common goal and that's just Mm -hmm. being the best and the best always evolve and learn and grow and i think that is what has been the most fun is doing that in the short period of time yeah yeah. When, when you were creating the vision for this team before you hit the ground running what did you think at first you know what was some ideas that you had in mind the first thing was we knew that this needed to happen because there just wasn't anything for women right. here right yeah and we wanted to do it right from the beginning yeah exactly and we knew that we needed a higher level of soccer for women in this mm-hmm. area that was originally kind of where the idea started um this is something that's been tossed around and in and around the soccer community for a number of years is a, a pre-professional team, um, but it just never had come to fruition. And so that idea um, kind of grew it um, through research, through talking to other teams. That is kind of where it where it started mm-hmm. and grew to become something that we felt um, coming together with the Thomases that we needed to bring to this community. It was something important for women and women's sports, soccer particularly. Looking back at the first season, what's something that you learned or something that you can bring forward to to this season? I know it's a load of questions. So many things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're still learning. Yeah, we'll always be learning. Right. I think for me, it's definitely about uh, acknowledging what you don't know um, mm-hmm. and being willing to have those conversations and work with people who do know in those areas and who are the experts. Um, because... You know, none of us have, the four of us have not owned a team before, um, haven't coached soccer. Um, So it was really just about, I think, surrounding ourselves by a lot of people and being willing to have conversations to work through things and figure things out as we go. And I think, you know, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on, it it was very easy to come up with our mission of empowering women through soccer, Mm -hmm. both on and off the field. And we came up with our, like, three pillars of authenticity, integrity, and purpose quite easily and quite quickly. And I think for me, the biggest thing has been learning to really stay true to them and how important that is and walking the walk, even though it is hard. But like Melissa said, just kind of having conversations and learning and being open to that has, I think, helped us move forward with where we want this team to go. Absolutely. Now, this is another off book question that I didn't give you, Jeez. but when you saw the, com- I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> when, when you saw the community though, come out and support the team that first season, <laughs> did, did that kind of surprise you at first to see how many people actually came out to the first season just to know that you had that community support? 
Yes yeah. and no. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that first game, I mean, we had no idea what to expect. Mm-hmm. And the fact that there were so many people there. Like 650 people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we knew that our community supports sports teams. Yeah. Like, right. we knew that. But, of course, going in, not knowing what it's going to be like, I mean, we were like, oh, my gosh, are we going to have five people there? <laughs> or, But, it, yeah, I mean, our community and our support throughout the whole season really, really blew us away. Yeah. So yeah. it was incredible. A lot of pride. I mean, just super proud of what we had all accomplished, mm-hmm. not just us as owners, sure. but what we had accomplished as an organization so quickly, um, the team, mm-hmm. um, how they were already standing up and using their voice and, and being leaders on the field, um, and then the community to really support us and, and come together and show that they they love soccer, they love women's sports. Um, that was just, it was huge. Yeah. Really powerful. I think it just got the girls excited when they did get on the field and saw, I mean, yeah. they were probably thinking, this is it. Like, this is the <laughs> moment that I've been working for. And this is something that's actually happened that's coming to fruition. And it definitely showed on the field, I thought, too, for definitely. sure. Okay, now back on, back on script. <laughs> back on script. So for anyone that hasn't been to a game for the Sioux Falls City, what's a typical season like or a typical game like? Uh, the typical season, it's fast. Um, it's like... Six to eight weeks. The players start arriving in early May, depending on when their schools get out. Um, Most of them are collegiate athletes, so they will be coming from their school year. So we have our first ladies arriving around May 6th, and then they they start coming in, trickling Mm -hmm. in over those next few weeks. They start training. Um, We have a training schedule set up, and then first first game is the 26th of May already. So... um, Away. Yeah, that's an away game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then our last game, which turns out to be a home game, is June 30th. That's our regular season. So if we do awesome, like we're intending to do, then yes. we'll advance beyond that. But yeah, it's it's quick. It's fast. Let's talk about those players, too. You said to me 40% of them are South yes. Dakota ladies coming back for this year. Let's talk about the other players. Yeah, so our roster this year is full already, which is great. Way ahead of last (laughs) last season. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, We have 31 players on our roster. Um, We have 12 returners. And like we said, 13 of them, or 13 of our players are from South Dakota Mm -hmm. this year. And then other states represented are Illinois, Colorado, California, Missouri, Arizona, Texas, Kansas, Iowa, and Minnesota. And then in addition to that, we've got some some young women from Brazil, Canada, the UK, and Switzerland. So that is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And And then, then, yeah, I guess we, we also are very excited. One of our players coming in from Brazil is she's actually going on this fall to play professionally in Portugal. So that's exciting. And then I guess personally, my daughter Mm -hmm. was able to, spend the past six months training um, over in Finland with their professional women's team. So that has been in an experience, definitely. Um, and I know she is excited to bring what she's learned over there back to Sioux Falls City. So yeah. absolutely. And same coach too, same coaching staff. Yeah. Yep. We still have, um, we, we did a little tweaking of positioning, but yeah, overall we have the same staff. Um, and what's also exciting is one of our players from last year, um, Anna Body, who was on the team mm-hmm. on kind of that front line, she has transitioned from player to assistant coach. So she has now um, joined the, the organization side and is working as, as kind of like a, a culture player liaison assistant coach in that role. So, but yeah, everybody else for the most part has returned as far as our coaching staff. Yeah, lots of things to get excited about. Again, I'm being joined in the studio with Emily Thomas and Melissa Nelson. They are the co-owners of the Sioux Falls City FC team. Now let's talk about the league and the organization in general. So the Women's Premier, that's WPSL organization, how did they hear about Sioux Falls? You know, what attracted them to the city? Well, we had reached out to them. So back in the fall of 2021, when we first kind of started talking about this idea of bringing a uh, you know, higher level or a pre-professional women's team to our area, um, we did some research to figure out what what does that even look like? Where do we go? Where do we even start? Um, the WPSL 
seemed like the, the correct starting place. It's the oldest women's soccer league in the world and the largest. Um, this year, there's about 130-ish teams mm -hmm. nationwide. And so we are one of those teams. Um, and so anyway, we started out by researching, landed on the WPSL, and then reached out to them and had conversations with them, as well as other teams within the league to kind of find out um, what the experience is like and and what it looks like to have a team. So they kind of, um, yeah, we reached out to them. That's kind of how they learned about us. And then once us four owners came together and decided to move forward, we applied and were accepted. So that's kind of how the, the beginnings started. Yeah, that's awesome. So when you were figuring out, I shouldn't say you, but when the WPLS reached out to you and said, yes, this is great. What division is the Sioux Falls City in? Is it like a, the Midwest League, the Western League? Where does it fall? Um, we're in like the Central Region, the Northern Conference. Okay, awesome. So we play um, in our area, we travel, and the big thing with the WPSL is they try to make the, the travel such that it's the same day, so it's not so extensive. And so we essentially play up in Fargo, we play a team in Rochester, Mankato, and then the remaining teams are up in the Minneapolis area. Okay. So they're all day's drives for all of us. Yeah, awesome. We, we've talked about a couple of times how much this team has contributed not just economically but also for women in sports and, and let's just talk about that how is this team really boosting females in sports right here in Sioux Falls and even on a global scale I think you know what we are really proud of that kind of evolved more than we could have imagined last year was it, we now have given little girls all across the area role models. Mm -hmm. And so obviously that is is huge to see for our girls in the community and in the area to see other women doing what they have this dream to do. And so that has been a, a big you know source of pride for us. And then in addition, our players bring awareness to these issues that are important mm -hmm. and really standing up for things that they feel need, you know, attention. And, and I think that is also very important. Um, on the global side of things, women's, women's soccer is growing immensely. And so it's, it's a great time to be in women's soccer. It is a great opportunity. Um, you know, women's teams are, the value has dramatically increased just over the past couple years. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to be a part of this as now there are other different, you know, before there were, there was the NWSL. Yep. So that's, that is the only professional women's league and it consists of 14 teams. So there's not a lot of opportunities currently for women to aspire to go professionally mm -hmm. or to, to play professionally. And now there are many different entities talking about creating these pro levels and we are very proud to say that we're in talks with several of them um they have come to us and they are interested in us becoming a part of that so it's a really fun place to be um it's a really it's a really great time to invest in women's soccer <laughs> so if anybody wants to <laughs> wants to invest yeah. give us a call this is an open advertisement yes. right now <laughs> we always like having the conversations <laughs> absolutely so what gets you excited about this upcoming season any goals you have in mind <laughs> yes that is a but, straight uh, pun it's a good pun <laughs> Well, obviously, we want to do well. We'd love to advance beyond yeah. the regular season. I mean, that's just the obvious goal. Um, definitely increasing our game attendance and increasing the awareness so that others out there know we exist. Um, and again, like Emily mentioned, these these young girls can really see what they can dream and, and aspire to be and, and that it's possible. Yeah, I think something that I'm excited for personally is like just the game day experience we are really working on creating just a fun environment for the community to to come and just have a good time and we're you know we're elevating various community partners very com various community organizations um we're really trying hard to to give back to the community and just really 
during our short season really make a powerful impact. And so, yeah, I'm excited for all the all the fun things we are trying to get together. Yeah. Any new ideas for people to come to the pitch or maybe some different themes for the games? I know you were talking about how the girls are actually deciding the themes for this season. Yeah. So one thing that we started um, at the end of, of last year, really, we created a players council. And so that is um, some of the players that meet on a regular basis mm -hmm. and they talk about issues that are important to them. They put out, you know, polls to the rest of the uh, ladies on the team and, and get input. Um, and so we've really allowed them to use their voice and come up with ideas that are important to them. Um, you know, we have to put guardrails on there as, as owners and as an organization, mm -hmm. but really it's about letting them have a say in what's important to them. And so they have lifted up several themes and ideas of things that we'll be working to um, partner with people and community entities and organizations to highlight and support and just bring awareness. Yeah, and I can, I mean, I think we can say what, mm -hmm. what our players decided on. Um, so we will have a mental health matters game night we'll have a pride night we'll have youth in sports disordered eating and human and sex trafficking and so those are all the causes that our players feel need to be uplifted and and create an awareness and we've got all kinds of fun plans um as far as like what the players will do for those mm -hmm. Um, so stay tuned for those. And then, you know, we're also doing some promotions. So we'll be promoting with the, you know, Humane Society. We'll be promoting um, with Girl Scouts. We're working on that. Working with Girls on the Run. Girls on the Run. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's many, many organizations in conversation with us to make it just really fun. And the goal is to have the concourse at the USF football stadium full of various community organizations to just let the community know that they're there. So, yeah. Isn't it just awesome to see the girls coming together to support these different causes mm -hmm. and, and create awareness? Were, were you, I shouldn't say you were surprised by how big of an impact that was, but seriously, were you surprised of how many people just rallied behind those causes and showed their supports during certain nights for those games? I think so. Like, you know, you you just we were so entrenched and coming up with what these things would look like that I guess we didn't really realize the full extent of, of what that impact would be. I mean, we for like each cause, um, we created shirts and, and the ladies came out in those shirts. And it was interesting how we didn't really think beyond that. And we had at the games, we had people saying, well, can I buy that shirt? Whether it was the pride one or the. Um, the gun violence awareness, mm -hmm. people wanted to buy those shirts. They really wanted to get behind those causes. And so to me, that was just really cool and, and eye-opening, honestly. So we're working to try to keep all those things in mind as we um, create all these different op opportunities and, and awarenesses. And not only just like locally, but the people that have reached out and have you know bought merch to support us all around the country, mm -hmm. yeah. wanting to to know what we're doing and have really expressed support and really like how we're doing things um, a little differently um, and very authentic to who we all are and what we believe and it's it's just been really cool to see people from all over the country mm -hmm. really get involved. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The wonders of social media. Don't yeah, yeah. Did yes. not did not plan that. No, no. But, but the reach just keeps growing, so that's been really fun to watch as well. And looking yeah. at the list that the girls voted on this year, what does that tell you about the team? I, I shouldn't say it like that, but what does it tell you about what they're passionate about? And just to get a little bit of insight on them, especially for the new players that are coming on the team. I mean, to me, it it just it just shows the character mm -hmm. of. The young women who are, you know, are playing for Sioux Falls City, it shows that they care about things bigger than themselves and, and bigger really than soccer, yeah, really. Yes. And they really want to make it make a difference and make a change mm -hmm. for, for good. So yeah. yeah and they're very proud of that. Yeah, and they're aware and they're engaged. And I think that's important too, that you know, it's easy to be complacent, um, sometimes in the, the world that we live in, but for them to stand up and take a stand on some of these things, I think that's really big. 
Yeah. yeah. Brave. Yeah. Brave. Yeah, very brave. That's a good word to say, brave for all the all the girls and even the coaches because mm-hmm. they're standing behind behind the team too. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you guys, you all know? of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's what we we really aim have aimed to do is create mm-hmm. this culture of of that exact thing is being brave in sometimes difficult times and yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, very very proud of the young women coming in and can't wait to meet them all. <laughs> yeah, right. And the ladies coming back and and Definitely. those that were on the team last year that helped create the culture yes. that we are now moving forward with because we know that you know life happens and some of them are graduating and having internships and other opportunities mm-hmm. and we're just we're proud that they were part of our in- inaugural season. Yeah, they'll always be in the family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> part of the Sioux Falls City family. Yep. Love it. Again, if you are just listening, I'm being joined in the studio with Emily Thomas and Melissa Nelson, the co-owners of the Sioux Falls City FC. So let's talk about this season now, the second season. When does it start? You already mentioned it once already. And talk about that first home game, too. So our first game is an away game. That's May 26th. We'll be heading up to the Minneapolis area playing Selvo. Um, But then our first home game happens on Friday, June 2nd. And so we're really excited that our home games this year um, all land in June. And they are all either on a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon. So we think that's a great opportunity for families and couples and anyone to come out and be part of of that game day experience like Emily was talking about. We're really working to elevate that. Um, It was great last year, but Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be even bigger and and more fun this year. Now, for anyone that hasn't been to a game before, it's pretty fun. (laughs) I'm looking to be part of it. Look, we, we all laughed even before this interview about, like, Gosh, did we really have that much of a, I don't want to say train wreck the first game, but we really, we didn't know what we were doing. I was even even sitting in the booth going, do I remember how to do this? Like, do I remember how to actually announce and just, you know, be that assertive, like, voice? But, but we got through it, you know, we got through it. And I think there, there's a lot of excitement with the game day experiences with the Sioux Falls City FC. For one, I believe Roundhouse Brew Pub is coming back. Why don't you talk? about that yeah they've been incredible um partners and this year this season we can look to do some pre-gaming um outside the roundhouse and then of course after the game everybody heads there our all of all of the staff and the players Mm -hmm. always head there so it's always a fun place to to go after the game um yeah, and we've done a, a unique um, kind of co-branding with them for this season. We created a 20-ounce um, mug with a really cool closable top that is going to be co-branded, Sioux Falls City and Roundhouse. And so when people go on to our website and purchase their season ticket packets, um, they will be able to get one of these mugs included, which will give them discounts. So unlimited discounts on game days, of course, <laughs> um, whether that be beer or cocktails or soda, which is free. Um, but then when they do use their mug at other times that it's not a game day, they will get a discount as well. So we're really excited to be rolling those out. Um, they're very cool. So yeah, they are. <laughs> I told you it was a fun experience. <laughs> I said it was going to be fun. And I think there's something important too for the kids that go to the game. Is there still going to be like an autograph session, meet the players session? How does that go? There will be handouts like definitely, or swag. Or... Yeah. I mean, we learned last year, a couple games in, mm-hmm. that what a cool experience for all the kids in the crowd and it doesn't even have to be kids i mean anybody can go down to our autograph alley after the game and you know have the players sign something that they receive at the game so yeah that is definitely going to be something that is part of all five games so definitely something to look forward to yeah when it comes to the autograph session how do the players feel about that were they kind of like nervous at first or kind of thinking this is kind of weird. It's not like I'm doing anything bigger than collegiate <laughs> sports right now. So this must be a pretty, it's a good experience for them in case they do want to move up to the professional league. Yeah, I would say they were pretty shocked at the amount of kids that were just in line waiting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was empowering for them because I think it very. showed that they are role models. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be a professional athlete to be a role yeah, model. Very true. 
And I think that's what it showed, you know, for these ladies who, you know, we think they're amazing and they, they go to school and they play their college sport. But to see all these young, you know, mostly other girls looking up to them and wanting their autograph, I think it probably was pretty empowering to see what a what an impact that they're making. And and even if we would lose a game, mm -hmm. they yeah. still they were looked up to. Yep. And I think that also helps, like, you know, you don't have to be always a winner to make a difference mm -hmm. in someone's life or to be a role model. So I think it was a little bit of like an aha moment for a lot of them to realize that too. Yeah. yeah. Created some perspective, like you win or lose, but you have class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No matter which way the, definitely the ball bounces. The ball bounces. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't, I, couldn't, there. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't resist. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So when it comes to the home field, uh, University of Sioux Falls, they were great last year. Is that still the, the home field for the Sioux Falls City FC this year? Yes, it is. Same, same location. Mm -hmm. um, some added seating. Uh, we are going to add Ooh, some. Ooh, tell me about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. So we're adding premier seating, which will be the upper deck of, oh, okay. of the stadium. Yeah. So, you know, corporate days out um, or nights out. That's also an, an option for season tickets if they, you know, people want to pick those mm -hmm. seats to, you know, look down and kind of see the whole field a little bit better. Um, and then we're kind of working on some other, maybe some benefits of sitting up there as well we're working on. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. <laughs> it's a good view of the pitch, too. It, you can it literally is. see everything yeah. on the pitch and it's it's a great experience you know overall yeah. the field the atmosphere it's great so before we we wrap this up again i'm being joined by emily thomas and melissa nelson the co-owners of the sioux Falls city fc what is something that you're looking forward to about the second season I think really just continuing to elevate the game, mm -hmm. um, to, to keep bringing something unique and, and new and fresh. Um, and like Emily said, doing it our way, um, bringing that to the community, to, you know, both local athletes being on the team, as well as those that are, are coming into a new city. A lot of these ladies, this will be their first time, I imagine, mm -hmm. in Sioux Falls, which is pretty cool. Um, but then also to create that experience for the community and include and invite all these different partners to be a part of this. I think yeah. that's pretty neat. I will say one of the things that we've worked pretty hard on this year too is we will be announcing a brand new kit um, for one of our games. And we have partnered with uh, the Boozy Bakery at JJ's uh, mm. to bring <laughs> this new kit. And amazing. it is an amazing mm -hmm. kit. Yeah. Um, they will be, you know, the jerseys will be for sale. Um, it's just been really fun to, you know, work with, like Melissa said, different partners mm -hmm. and bringing these new things. And one thing that I think I'm also really excited about is our goal to have our players do all this video content mm -hmm. and just having a lot of fun with it. The number one rule of Gabe Nelson was <laughs> we must have fun. And so oh, he knows fun. Yes, he does. Everybody knows yes. fun with Sioux Falls City FC. Yeah. Great goals to have this season. Literally, I just noticed we've been saying another pun there with goals. I tell you, I said it was going to be a good time. All right. So if anybody has any questions about tickets, where they can purchase them, or about Sioux Falls City FC, what's that website to go to? Website is SiouxFallsCityFC.com. You can head that direction, and our season tickets are up and available. We have season tickets for all five home games for $50 for the packet for regular seating. Upper deck seating is $75. And like I mentioned earlier, those season tickets will include that 20-ounce um, co-branded mug with Roundhouse to get you game day and beyond discounts. So you can also check out our website for swag as well. So um, we'll we have, have some new stuff. We'll have some new stuff, some new fun right? Stuff. We have some new hats. I would like to try on that new stuff. Yes. <laughs> a fashion show. No, sure. yes. <laughs> yeah, so check out all the swag and there's more to come. Sunday Focus is a public affairs program of Results Radio Town Square Media Sioux Falls.